And so we're scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All oh, my break, 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 break. Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw. For now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have, once again, the rogue Jedi himself, Stuart. Hey, I'm retired. Same difference. Same difference. We have the drunk soldier, Amy. (laughs) I'm not a soldier. (laughs) Hi-o. And we have the the fairy, Scarecrow. What? (laughs) <laughs> I might have got two of them mixed up a little. Whoopsie. Yeah, anyway, on tonight's show, we have top five sci-fi games. Uh, me and Stuart went and watched Terminator Genesis, so we'll give you the feedback on that. And last but not least, Humans. A new interesting cyborg show and our thoughts after watching the first couple episodes of that. Or in one of our cases, I won't tell you who, one episode. And... Refusing to go anywhere else. Um, so let's start off top five sci-fi games. So ranked number five for me would be Star Trek Legacy. I actually did a Let's Play in that. Um, it's up on the YouTube channel. The same YouTube channel that this is on. Let's play. Yeah, yeah. It's really bad. Just, I actually yeah. liked it as a game. Oh, as a game it's good. The Let's Play is shit. My point, yeah. <laughs> The game is good. Let's play shit. Yeah, the game yeah. is so, yeah. actually really fun. Yeah. The, oh, there's a, see, the game is one of those games that's so good that there's the, the it, there's a couple of things... The NX series, the yeah. NX well, it's not that. There's, it's one of those games that's so good that you sort of start looking for things, if you know what I mean. Like, things that it's missing that would have made it sort of perfect. Like, proper three-dimensional flight. Being able to do a loop-to-loop would have been spectacular, but you can't actually do that. It goes to nose straight up and down and then it starts spinning which is annoying um but other than that i can't really sort of fault that game it's a lot of fun um okay let's go with Stuart. what's your number five uh my number five is command and conquer red alert i I was originally going to go for the tiberian wars but i really love the original red alert too much fair enough so it's just it, to me, the Command and Conquer is like is the iconic RTS. Like it started like what it started the way for like Diablo, uh, Warcraft, all those. It it was the original. It was the baby of everything, and it's just paved the way for a lot of things we have now. And I would love to see it get a resurgence one day. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I'm, I'm back in the old days of my. Uh, RTS type era. Command and Conquer was fun. Um, how about Scarecrow? Since you're the last one left, since Amy is not playing this game. Yeah. Well, my top five, or well, number five, would have to be Wing Commander. The Wing Commander series. My now, only I've... exposure to Wing Commander is the movie, and we all know how I feel about that. The movie is one thing. The games have a lot had a lot of potential. I played the demos of them years ago and they were highly addictive. Never got enough out of it. Now I've actually got two of the full games. My computer's too advanced and it can't run them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so they're on there for nostalgia factor. Mm. Oh yeah. 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 Well I think I'll let you continue for your number four. Scarecrow? Alright, number four. This one probably will get me flamed. Battlefield 2142. Eh. It's a Battlefield game. I I actually... I think Battlefield 2142 was the Battlefield game that I had. Played for like two minutes and never touched again. He was like, nope. It has it's has this traditional Battlefield elements. I'll give it that. But there was just something epic about a Battlefield that finally lets you walk around with... Or go around with hover tanks... 
mech-style walkers, and giant floating aircraft carriers in the sky. Isn't that just Titanfall? <laughs> yeah, but ten years before Titanfall. <laughs> I know. Just that's what all the that's what all the all, all hey, those they generations got Titanfall just say. from Battlefield Twenty One Forty Two's Titan mode. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah okay. Where the objective was making the Titans fall. Okay, so my number four would be Destiny. Now, to me, Destiny, made by the same guys that made Halo, um, is an incredibly addictive game. I actually really enjoyed playing it, but it just became too grindy for me. Just That was the thing that sort of let it down. It would be higher up the list if it wasn't as grindy as it was. Um, and, yeah, that sort of walked away from it. I haven't really touched it in probably three or four months, so I might have to get back and play that again. And Stuart, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is the Nintendo GameCube uh, game Star Fox Adventures. Now, this is one where it actually took you out of the of the R wing. It was more of a platformer style um, sci fi game. Okay, so it's sort is... of Mario meets Star Fox. Uh, more uh, more leaning towards a little uh, Legend of Story platforming wise, actually. Okay. Well said, Sky. Well said. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> very well said. Yeah, Sky just posted in the chat. Destiny's story was uh, nearly not existent until House of Wolves DLC, and I agree. Um, but I it's just, uh, it was it was less the story issues and more of the fact that in order to get good gear, I have to play every single day, twenty four seven, and grind the crap out of the game, and Even that's what drove me away. No, kind of still no story. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's all the number four's done, isn't it? Yep. It's sort of weird yes. doing a top five with only three of us. Yeah, yeah. the text, yeah. it's so short. Oh, yeah, we're, we're cruising through this. We'll be on the honourable mentions before we know it. <laughs> uh, now, Which day you get sidetracked. I, I yeah, can talk about my number three for a long time. Yeah, my number three is probably... <laughs> we could rope him in. He does have a point. Yeah, you could, yeah fine. We, we could. Will. Let's bring him in. Yeah. Okay, so joining us any second now. Um, if I can remember what the hell I'm I got doing. It. If you didn't remove him. There we go. Okay, joining us any second will be Sky, who hasn't joined us in a little while, so I thought he had two week um oh, crap. three weeks ago. Oh <laughs> he walks in and the first thing he does is swear. <laughs> Oh, oh crap, man, sorry guys. We've been You're so fine. good up until now. Full PG-13. We've been on our I best am behavior. I'm so sorry. Walks in the door, <laughs> okay. kicks his toes, swears. Great skills. <laughs> so, anyway. Right. We're throwing him in the Pretty deep end. Much. He's got no prep time for his top five list. It's just sort of a, guess what? You're doing a top five. Have fun. Toss in the deep end. So. <laughs> All right. I'll let you catch up from number five right through to number three before I say what my number... Th uh, did I say my number three? I can't remember. No. We'll get there. Okay. All right. So, my number five. Oh, goodness. All right. I'm probably going to have to go with um, Space Hulk. The, the oh, um, computer version of the 40K. God damn it, I've got to close this. Um, of the 40K game made a hell of a way back. It is ancient, but it's still fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that that would be my number five with video game wise. Um, four, four. Holy crap! <laughs> uh, yeah. There is a this list. Why I love throwing people in the deep end. It, 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 pretty took, much. it took me three days just to get my list finalized. Yeah. Sky, check the <laughs> check the call chat, and it'll I'll be throwing you a little bit of a bone. So, <laughs> all right, all <laughs> I've just right. dumped our honorable mention list take short list. Anything middle. off mine, and we kill you. Yeah, agreed. Yep. All right. All right. Um. You're only allowed to use the honorable mentions list. <laughs> crap. Or ones you come up with. Star Wars, um, pod racing. Star Wars Podracer. Nintendo 64. Yes. For my number four here. That was 
probably one of my favorite games growing up as a kid. It was amazing. It was so much fun. Like pod racing is amazing. The different, the different um, because you start on Mos Eisley, but then you went to the different planets. Yeah, and it was, and it got progressively harder and harder and more and more BS until you're turning a corner and exploding in a second, and you're just like, I don't even know what's <laughs> happening anymore. <laughs> Yeah, some some bad some bad words may have been said about by, by me during my young years when I played Pod Racer. Mm. Yeah, especially there's there's a couple of the maps you can glitch them and just fly outside and fly away from the map and just keep going, and you don't yeah. blow up. You just keep going, and you're like, I can't turn. I can't. I'm just am I just leaving now? Okay, I'm, my planet must need me. Road tripping across <laughs> the planet. Yeah. So, pretty much. Pretty much. So yeah, so. We'll move on to number threes now. Uh, so I'll leave the, I'll leave Sky to last on this one to give him a chance to yeah to, to, to give of, me a chance to catch up properly. Yeah, it's, it's much fun as it is throwing him in the deep end. <laughs> so my number three is Kerbal Space Program. It's the newest game on my list, um, at least for me, playing it wise. And I just love building rockets that go up and break the laws of physics. Like, in one of my saves, I've got a spaceship that is literally swimming its way out of the solar system. Not even joking. It's the most hilarious thing in the world to see. And here we have Shades of Gurren Lagan. Yeah. So, it's... Just Pretty much. All, all the rocket boosters are sort of stuck inside each other, and they're sort of glitching and sort of swimming around and sort of in this really cool little wave motion. And it's making it accelerate, and I don't know how, I don't know why it just is, so I just sort of left it. And now it's leaving the system. So you've managed to inadvertently create a wave motion engine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, crud. That, that sort of no happened. Thanks. That sort of happened. Uh, okay. Anyway, Scarecrow, what's your number three? Uh, Mass Effect. Mass, Mass Effect, Effect series. Oh. Preferably yeah. number one over two and three, based on, because of the extra character choices and yeah. customization yeah. options that were yeah. in Mass them. Effect. Mass Effect One was uh, was re- was a really big game. Yeah, it's huge. It is I'd gigantic love if we could get it for remade using the Mass Effect Two Three graphics engine, but with all the customization options and everything else we have for well, Mass Effect One. Well, just remember with um, what was announced at E3 with um, Xbox One backwards compatibility, uh, compatibility, you'll be able to play it. Um, Mass Effect, you'll be able to play the Mass Effect games on your Xbox One now. And on a random note, it actually much, ranked yeah. number one by you guys. And do I fans. actually look like I give a fuck about X-Bones? <laughs> no. Actually. Well, you obviously don't have an X-Boner. X-Boner. Oh, oh God. <laughs> guys! Keep it PG. Oh, oh man, this is... Yeah, sorry. we deserve yeah. that one. <laughs> there's, there's, there's rails, and I don't know where they are, but we lost them a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, yeah. moving yeah. on to Honestly. Stuart, number three. <laughs> Uh, my number three is something very near and dear to my heart. Star Wars Republic Commando. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Th- this w- is... This is... I, and his, I don't play many shooters. I'm not a big FPS shooter. Like, I'm not a big FPS player. The amount of hours I've put in, into Star Wars Commando on, on Steam is ridiculous. <laughs> I, I can just replay the story over and over and over again and still get freaked up by Trend Oceans in space. <laughs> it's just, I don't know what it is, just hearing Trend Oceans walking around in the air ducts is creepy as hell. Yeah. Okay, so Sky, have you got yourself a number three? My number three? Would be the um, XCOM series. XCOM oh, series. I wondered yes. when that was going to come up. Yeah, that is actually <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> awesome. I was not expecting how awesome it was before I started playing it. <laughs> shout out to Elroy for XCOM. Yeah, I was just about to say shout out to our mate Elroy who loves XCOM. Like he, it, he loves X, XCOM for passion. It, seriously, every <laughs> time I see him and every time I talk to him on Skype. Always something about XCOM. Consistently, constantly, doesn't stop. If there was a top five list and he was here, XCOM would it's be number one. XCOM. XCOM would be five, four, three, two, and one. So, <laughs> no, which has no, nothing to do with him not playing many other games. With Elroy, it's either XCOM or League of Legends. Yeah, but League of Legends no, isn't sci-fi, it, so. And Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah, that too. And occasionally Pokemon. Anyway, enough about <laughs> the person who's not on the podcast. <laughs> Moving on to number two. 
everyone's done their threes, yeah? Yep. Yes. Okay, good. Mm. So just wanted to double check. Now, this one for me is a game that's near and dear to my heart. And to be perfectly honest, I still use it and play it today, even though it's a fairly old game. And it was actually the game that got me into modding and coding, which eventually led me to save sci-fi. Star Wars Empire at War Force of Corruption, or even just Empire at oh, War. Empire at War was flipping amazing. It would be, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, it is bar none the best Star Wars game that was ever made. And that's because I don't like the FPS style games. I played Jedi Outcast, I played Old Republic, I played a heap of them, but um, to me, the RTS style ship to ship battles, this game cannot be beat outside of. Homeworld mods or Sins of Solar Empire mods or one of those sort of things. But as a dedicated Star Wars RTS, nothing can beat this game. <laughs> Sorry, but I, mm. I, I really like this game. No, it's... It. it's, yeah, it's, it's fair it's, enough. It's, it's probably top three of all Star Wars games ma ever made. Agreed. Yeah. Well, majority, mm. of fans will, majority of fans will argue that um, Nuts of the Republic will be number one. Yeah, but... but that's the fanboys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and nothing to take away from that sort of republic is amazing, but Empire War just it, it as I said it it, it, was, it was an RTS it's that was different. Yeah. It's yes. different and stands on its own with mm. no rivals to its reign at this point in time. Yeah, and not only that, it's it's one of the easiest games to mod. Let's say not even so, Starcraft comes close to it. Yeah, it's it's one of the easiest games to mod, and there are so many mods out there for it now. There's Star Trek mods, Star Wars mods, even. Our good friends over at um, Stargate, uh, Stargate Empire or Pegasus Chronicles. They're currently doing a full conversion, turning it into a Stargate game. And it looks absolutely spectacular. Like I said, the only game that comes close to it is Homeworld. It's the only one I know of, and since of a Solar Empire, only two I know of that come close to my ability in that sort of category. Yeah, like, Sims has so many, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. But, but Empire at War is so much easier than Sins. It's, it's HTML code. It's just so simple. Anyway, mm. move, moving on and enough raving for my number two. Let's go Scarecrow's number two. This one, like yours, Dave, is very near and dear to my heart to the point I wanted to play it so badly recently that I actually had to buy it again on Steam because the original disc version won't work anymore. <laughs> You know you, you love a got... game when you burn the disc out. And random note, no, no, I've no, actually got... It's not the disc that burnt out. It's actually the game itself. It does not like the coding of current Windows systems. Ooh. Well, so it's to actually content, play it, you actually need Steam now to, for Steam to counter the... the thing, to enable yeah. it to play through with modern Windows. Well, put it this way. I've got Empire at War, Force of Corruption on Steam. I've got four different copies on discs and another one floating around somewhere. Uh, the gold pack, I've got like two copies of that. So, oh, right, cool. So, yeah, so this game in question, though, for me, is Dark Star 1. Yeah. Mm. So just for, the, just for the sheer hell of it, it's fun, it's single play, it's got... It's single play only, so there's no multiplayer. It's highly moddable, just like yours. Although not many people actually bought it and realised the moddability of it. Yeah. I mean, they actually designed the modability into the engine from the ground up. Nice. They want people to mod it. Nice. Hmm. So, yeah. it's there, guys. Nice. So check if, it out. If you get a chance, check it out. I'll have to check it out. Um, Stuart. Yeah. What's your number two? My number two is it. it this is also very near. To be honest, my top three are all very near and dear to my heart for for all different reasons. My number two is Gears of War 3, and there is a story to go with this. Why? A few years ago, uh, back just, just around the time when Adventure Time was starting to get big, John DiMaggio comes out. For those who don't know, he voices Marcus Phoenix. In Boring. Gears. Next. Okay. <laughs> 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 Short, long story short, John DiMaggio saw my Gears of War 3, which I still have. Nice. I'll give you props awesome. for that one. So I, I, I will. I am most certainly going to get an Xbox and just come back and play it again at some given time, nice. or, or get the Ultimate Edition again to sign it. That one. So next time he's back. Yeah. He seems yeah, to come back fairly regularly. Around. So. Yeah. Next time he's around. 
Yeah. So, Sky, what's your number two? All right, my number two will probably have to be Halo Three ODST. Nice. That's actually the what one was... Halo that I actually felt really like immersed into. Nice. Yeah, it, I, 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 ODST was good, but um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. The open world map, so you can sort of explore a massive area. Um, mm. the, the night vision was a cool new sort of thing, as yeah. opposed to the, a, the helmet lights. And it, was a, and it was a challenge because you didn't always have unlimited ammo. You always had to go around changing weapons all the time. Oh, not only did not have yeah, unlimited ammo, much. you didn't have unlimited shield. It was, you were just a squishy little <laughs> person. True. Yeah, you get punched once and you're almost dead. You get punched twice and you you go long story yeah. short, you're gone. And don't get started on yeah. the firefight. Oh god, the firefight. Oh, so the, the firefight. Fire fight. Oh, the amount the, of times pain... people played that. Holy oh, yeah. crap! The, the painful memories. Oh, the the, the 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 four hours of doing a firefight to try and get that achievement, and at the last oh. sort of few few minutes, disconnected, and you just curl up in the fetal position, crying. <laughs> <laughs> It so, felt like that sometimes, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, uh, we should move oh, along. Yeah. yeah, we're moving along. So, Scarecrow, number one. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic slash Old Republic. It's just replayable and fun. Yeah. See, I'm, the, my problem is I've never been that much of an RPG person. So, that's why I never really got into those sort of games. Oh, what? I may have just found some really big news. Hold it. Sit oh. on it. It's not time to crap it out yet. Yes. <laughs> Let's, well, it, yeah. it's sort of sci-fi. Do it. I'll, Don't no, take it. I'll, I'll leave it I will now. throw you out the airlock. So, yeah. Anyway. So, Sky, what is your number one? All right. My number one um, is very, very close to my heart. Um, I would have to go around and say Doom 2 here. Doom 2. The... You stole it! Yes. <laughs> After going through... Good thing I have a like, backup. Doom 1 for Ma- through Mars, um, both on the Phobos base and Deimos base, and through Hell, you come back, and you're back on Earth going through Hell yet again. <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't get any better than that. For and the those... replayability is amazing. For those wondering, somebody else has got Doom 2 as no number one. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually um, I actually still have a, the hard copy of Doom 2. Like, I still have the CD, <laughs> still CD-ROM. Nice. 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 Nostalgia yes. value. You know, oh, yes. My first copy of Doom and Doom 2 were um, given to me on floppy disk by my former com- computer teacher back when I was in grade 8. Nice. <laughs> I remember and installing games from like s- like 16 floppy disks worth of to install one game. <laughs> yep. Duh. <laughs> There's so many people miss out on the good old-fashioned sounds of a floppy drive going... <laughs> it's like, it sounds like it's eating the disk, but it's perfectly normal. <laughs> I, I love them. Um, oh, those are beautiful. There's a oh, video that came times. out. Um, there was a video that came out. It's someone did um, the Mario thing, but it was all with 32 bit floppy disks. I've seen the Star Wars <laughs> theme done with that. Same yeah, that sort one of thing. Cool. But it's so cool. <laughs> it's just like people are just like, ah, my ears. I'm like, ah, so glorious. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> moving on so to cool. moving on to my, my number, number one, one, since Stuart doesn't get a number one because his was stolen. He I actually have a, had a backup. Oh. I have a backup. Fine, uh, Stuart, tell us your backup. My backup for number one is Xenoblade Chronicles. Oh, yeah, nice. Xenoblade is a is a is a uh, long time running uh, uh, sci fi series on the on the Nintendo. Okay, that's there's probably why I've never heard of it. It's on the Nintendo. Yeah, there's a new one yeah. coming out later this year, but mm. Chronicles is my favorite because I actually really really like the story of Shulk with the Monado. Basically, the Monado is a weapon that he can see in the future and predict things. Okay. That, that's pretty yeah. wicked. Yeah. yeah, it's a really awesome game. And it's on, it is on the Wii U and also on 3DS. Nice. So, mm. Sweet. If you have one, go check it out. It's a really awesome game. Really grindy, but really fun. Okay, so my number one was sort of alluded to earlier. It's the Halo games. Specifically, 
the, the two big ones for me were Halo 3 and Halo Reach. But my housemate would argue for Halo 2. And my cousin would argue for Halo 1. So I just sort of went Halo 1, 2, and 3 and Reach. By the way... 4 doesn't exist. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I prefer four over Reach. Yeah, actually, I played the crap out of Reach. Like I, the, the Forge just... mode and the multiplayer, like the storyline. I could play that thing with every level with my eyes closed on. You like. want to know the funny thing? Why I don't mm. like Reach? Yeah. I got introduced to the Halo backstory before Reach was even thought up as a game. Yeah. Reach tramples all over yeah. the established backstory. For well, uh, that reason alone, I don't like it. I don't okay. really like it. So the, 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 I'll give it the cr- credit it's due. It is a good game, but I wish it wasn't called yeah. Reach. I, I, Any I, I, other I just, planet, yes, not Reach. I, it I, screws up too much. I, I understand the... Um, I've actually read the book, <laughs> Fall of Reach, and I oh, understand yes. where you're coming from. But at The, the book's same, amazing. Yeah, the book's amazing. But at this, like, in the book, where they've got the ships in orbit with the firing the Mac cannons, and they've got the giant shipping yard in front of them to catch all the plasma, they flip that thing up and blast the Mac cannons, flip it back down again. I would love to see that in a movie. That would be fucking spectacular. Um, oh yeah. But to be perfectly honest, I actually really enjoyed the Reach and the storyline. And even though I've read the book, I could put it aside just like I can with Star Wars, and I follow the same rules with. Every I'm as consistent as I can possibly be with this. The primary medium is primary canon. The primary medium for Halo is games. The secondary medium is books. So unfortunately, in this scenario, the book is is would fall into the category of a separate story, separate the universe, so to speak, compared to the is, games. The book was created to explain the backstory for Halo One. Of course, it was yeah. actually. It was, it was actually commissioned by Bungie specifically and for that job to I do know. that. And then they, when three four three has the falling out with Bungie, or the, the original creators of Halo have a falling out with Bungie, Bungie continues making another Halo game, and pisses on their own property. Yeah, that's what snarked me. Now Halo Reach, in and of itself, would have been a fantastic story on any other potential human-controlled planet. If they named it anything but Reach, it would have been freaking epic. Yeah. I, see, I can see where you're coming from. Mm. Like, uh, what I, about I, the I... original world that John came from? Why couldn't they have used that one? Uh, Arcadia. Uh, have... That was actually... Um... That was Halo Wars. That yeah, was glossed... To hell, uh, that was really Before mad. Reach. Yeah. And on top of that, they explain everything through that with Hunt the Truth. Yeah. So, but you, you see what I mean? Any other planet controlled by humans apart from Reach for the would have worked yeah, better but you for can the Reach say name. That with, if you look at the Star Wars games, you can say exactly the same thing with them. Especially Force of Corruption. When he goes oh, yeah. through and steals the Super Star Destroyer? I'm sorry, no. That's not something that'll happen. Um, but, uh, the Empire had three of those things stolen anyway. Yeah, They did not exactly have good security on that. Yeah, that, on those particular things. Do they have good security that's, anything? R2 can get into everything. That's like... Oh, screw the droid. I mean, people that's like walk in and steal them. That is like you, me, and Stuart walking onto a helicarrier and flying it away with the Avengers staring at us. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not something that's going to happen. No. So you can... It's funny, it's, though. So it's... <laughs> and, got a point there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same sort of thing. It's meant to be their fucking flagship. It's like it'd be Which like type of super star destroyer was it? Was it this? Was it the executor class? Yes. Or was it the? It was the same one that was destroyed in the movie. So executor class. Okay. So that's not really the flagship. It's, buddy. It's the flagship in the movies. Do I need to default back to canon rules again for you? Hey, they actually have in canon, or they did before they, before Disney got their hands on it. Yeah. Have as canon the prop, a star destroyer that had a freaking Death Star laser built into it. Yeah. That was the, that was the true. Superstar Destroyer. Yeah. Anyway, back Wait. on topic. Halo 3, I, it was probably the one of the main FPSs that I played to death. And then Halo oh, yeah. Reach came out and it was took everything that was good about Halo 3 and made it better by getting rid of the Flood. <laughs> mm. I, 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 I really enjoyed the Flood. 
Yeah. I've got to come out and say it here. I really, really enjoyed the flood. The only no, thing about the don't... flood I like is the fact they go pop so easily to human weapons. Mm. They're strong against covenant <laughs> weapons, but by human weapons, give me a shotgun and then a five, and I'll kick their asses from here to next week. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's time to move on to the honorable mentions list, and f- there's a lot. There is quite a lot. Um, so I'll start with my honourable mentions, and we each get three honourable mentions. Oh, jeez. So, okay. um, for me, my honourable mentions, and this is sort of a quasi-sci-fi game, because it doesn't focus on the sci-fi, but it is still technically sci-fi. Dragon Ball Xenoverse. I've been playing the crap out of that game, and I don't like fighters. So, what does that tell you? <laughs> Well, that tells me I should go buy it right now, because if you like it that much... Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Like, it's ridiculous amounts of fun. Um, yeah. Only available through Steam. No. No, gonna... you can buy it on... At, it's um, on consoles. No, it's consoles not. I can't well. find a copy anywhere. Yeah. 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 It's on... It, just... I can find a copy, don't worry. I can get a, I can get a copy of it for Xbox One fairly easily. Mm. So, anyway... Um, this is a game I've actually got three copies of, and I'm not necessarily sure if it's technically sci-fi. The end of it is definitely, like, the last level really is. But the lead-up to that not is more fantasy, but I'm going to call it anyway. Conker's Bad Fur Day on Nintendo 64. Oh, dear God. Okay. That, that was the <laughs> game of my childhood. That, that Rare is actually releasing a 30-year um, anniversary. anniversary game pack thing for the Xbox One. Um, and which is going to be Conquer- amazing. And Conquer's Bad, on it. Conquer's Bad Fur Day's on it. So guess what I pre-ordered as soon as I heard it was coming? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Guess what I'm going to play the crap out of? Yeah. Yep, it's, yep. It's, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I am just going to play that game to death. It's one of the few games that is desperately, <laughs> desperately needs a sequel. It really does. Oh, it does. So, anyway. And last but not least, this is a... Um, one of the few RPGs I've ever been able to stand playing for extended periods of time, and that's more because of the fanboy element, Zoid's Legacy. I like that one too. Yeah, it's really it's good. A of, it was a lot of yeah. fun. I actually, it's Pokemon for Zoids. Yeah, effectively. Pretty much. <laughs> and yeah, the Legacy one's really cool. The the There's actually a third one which was only released in Japan. I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head. I think it was Zoid's, Zoid's, um, Zoid's Saga 3 or 4 or something. But it had even cooler stuff in it. It actually went fully into the fusions. It went fully into Genesis. Um, so it's Genesis' story. It had nice. um, lev- this level up sort of system where you could focus on leveling up different sets of stats. But if, say, you focused on leveling up attack, it would decrease other stats. But if you won lots of high end level battles, like I always did, you always had effectively unlimited money. So you could go then through and then level up the stats that have been bumped down. And eventually you could get all the stats to fully max 99999 down the board. And then all you had to do was bring that unit into battle. Use its weakest attack, your critical strike, sort of hit it two or three times because of how overpowered it was and just annihilate everything. You could wreck the ultimate boss with a Revraptor. Which I still find hilarious. Those who don't know what the Rev Raptor is, it's like a pissy little Velociraptor thing with size on the side of it, and it is weak as shit. Um, so, yeah, so those are my honourable mentions. Moving on to Stuart. Alright, uh, my honourable mentions. Uh, first off is the Quake, is the Quake series. I know, I know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I said I didn't play too many FPSs. But Quake is just fun. Like Quake and Doom, just uh, the, the the two original FPSs with uh, with Unreal. So yes. yeah, yeah. I would leads to my completely agree mention. with you there. <laughs> Which leads to my second honorable mention: Unreal Tournament. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. Went there. Uh, I remember modding the crap out of that. Uh, who did? Who? Did, okay. Honestly, who did not spend hours playing Unreal Tournament? Yeah. Me. <laughs> I I didn't have it. But I definitely agree. I, had well, I was playing four. Unreal Championship on the Xbox original. At least I was not like, the original. I had. At least not the... <laughs> I used to play 2004, and it used to be so taxing on my system that <laughs> oh, it sort of kind of melted the metal case a little. Yep. And my third honorable mention is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64. Nice. 
Nice. Uh, I see a lot of Nintendo 64 callbacks. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I I, I grew up on a 64. It has a very special place in my heart. Yeah. So did I. It, it's it's what anything on the sixty four is what got me into gaming. So yeah. So, oh yeah, just, yeah, so just thought of another game, just really quick. I know, I, I, I'm the host, so I get a bonus one because I'm me. Um, you derp stick. Yeah, yeah, because I derped it and forgot it, and then I just remembered it. Zoids, um, Zoids Legacy was like Pokemon for Zoids. There was actually a Pokemon game for Digimon as well, called. I remember that. It was Zoids World Two or Three. I Digimon was... World. Digimon World. Oh, Digimon World, Digimon yes. Digimon World 2 or 3. I can't remember which one. It's one of those two. Where, um... I think, actually... there's, a new... I think the... there's a new one coming out later this year, actually. Yeah, it's, it's going to be crap. Um, this one was oh, really they've good. They've all been crap, sadly. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. have not done the series they really justice. just... You can't... The only Digimon games that are half decent are the Rumble Arena games. Yeah, they're alright. But let me finish. Um, you go through these mazes, you find wild Digimon, you give them gifts, they, they heart you. Literally, a giant heart appears above their head. You kick their ass, and then if they like you, they'll join your team. And it's got all these sorts of stupidly complicated level-up Digivolve rules where you've got to level up to a certain point that it won't level anymore, so you've got to breed it with another one, and then you get the baby one from that, and then you've got to level it up even further. It's a bit of a clusterfuck. But I really enjoyed it as a kid, and that was probably... That was on PS1. So, yeah. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Let's keep going, because we really don't have much time left. No. <laughs> yeah. So, no. Scarecrow? Oh, Scarecrow, honorable <laughs> mentions, go. Alright. Sean Crisis Sweet. series. Gets an honorable mention from me because nothing says mm-hmm. sci fi like nanotechnology yeah. power suits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, free Space and Freelance are technically the same universe, just different. Eras. Couple hundred years variants and different galaxy, but same basic universe. And my third and final one. Mech Warrior series. Nice. Nothing like kicking the shit out of a bunch of dumb asses in time in you giant robots almost, when you're in a bigger one. You almost reference Titan Fall Duda. <laughs> suck my die sheet. <laughs> Oi. 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 Good Oi. Lord in heaven. PG thirteen. I don't care what language it's in. <laughs> Could be Man, gibberish for all I care. Guy. Yes, Sky. All Hon- right. Any honorable mentions? So, as yeah, for right. my honorable mentions, I had uh, there was faster than light. Yes, yes. Um, How can I forget? FTL, yes. FTL. That was amazing. Yeah, it's a good game. I still play um, it a lot. Gosh, what was my other one? Uh, it's around here somewhere. Titanfall. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D. Duke Duke Nukem he, 3D. He, I just, yeah. I'm so glad you didn't say the, the, the Duke Nukem Forever. I'm so glad you didn't say that. Yeah. If you said Duke I've Nukem never Forever, Duke I would have just. Forever. I would have had Honestly, you. don't really care about Forever. Yeah. No. But <laughs> no Duke one Nukem knows. 3D had references back to Doom on a whole load yeah. of other things as And then my last one um, would probably actually have to be the. Um, Abe's Odyssey series. Nice. <laughs> I didn't even think of Abe's Odyssey. Oh, I love Abe's wow. Odyssey. Making, that... making, making that... guards uh, kill themselves while farting was hilarious. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just realised something. Abe's Odyssey wasn't in the top five games. It wasn't even nominated. No. No. It wasn't in the tournament. Huh? No, because it's, it's one of those games that you just don't really... Sky, you there? Really sci-fi wise. Sky? Yeah. I'm here. Do you just sort of a little? Uh, am I okay now? Yeah, you're fine now. Okay now. Yeah, you're fine now. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let's move on to uh, Terminator Genesis. Um, I've seen it. Stuart's seen it. Sky, have you seen it? No. No. And we know that. Not yet. Anyway. Scarecrow hasn't seen it. Well, if you I'm haven't seen it, I would I'm walk away now. See. Get a chance to see it yeah, tomorrow yeah. Night. you're about to get spoilers. Yeah, I'm alright. Yeah, yeah, this spoilers. that's alright. So, get so, a so tomorrow, I, I would do my impersonation <laughs> well. of, um, wow, River Song. River Song. I can't believe my name, my brain blanked on the name, <laughs> and it's <laughs> so still derping. So you're gonna say Arnie for a second? <laughs> no, no, no. no I'll, do, I'll do my Fuck. best River Song impersonation. Spoilers. You scared now? I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you saw the picture I posted oh, up on the. Th- 
Yeah, no, I saw, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw that. I saw. I was like, um. We'll leave that until after. Yeah. So yes, what Terminator the Genesis. actual fuck? Um, <laughs> yes, Terminator Genesis. Sorry, Scarecrow is being <laughs> evil and posting pictures he shouldn't be posting, and that will not be going in the chat because that is terrifying. <laughs> Nightmares. I missed oh. all of my brain mid speak, so I missed. I actually missed out on Sky's number twos because of it. So yeah. Anyway. No worries. Anyway. It's okay. So Terminator, Terminator Genesis. Genesis. Um, we're on topic, we're, we're focusing, we're paying attention. Terminator Genesis. Stuart, what did you think? Um, now, as someone who has seen 3 and Salvation... Yeah, they don't exist. Just just pretend they're, they never oh, happened. Fight me, you! No, no, I'm okay. serious. For, for this movie to make sense, it's like Jurassic World. You've yeah. got to pretend number 3 that... and number 4 never happened. Yeah. But he's actually completely right. Yeah. Because they completely changed the timeline more than once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they don't Which just... Is what... they, they, they wibbly wobbly the hell out of that timeline. Isn't that just what Terminator does anyway? Yeah. No, no, no. They wibbly wobbly yeah, that, the... I thought that was the whole idea of Terminator, is wibbly wobbly the timeline everywhere. Yeah. And trust me, there was one moment where Arnie should have just said wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Instead he goes on about a five... What, what seems like a five minute rant about bullshit techno battle <laughs> yeah, al yeah al alternate realities and stuff yeah and it's like dude just just say wibbly wobbly time you want me and move on with it <laughs> even Jai Cornish has gone uh, English yeah <laughs> so yeah so yeah um it was I... overall for me and this is just how I feel you can watch the trailer and then the last 20 or so minutes and not really miss much no. uh, there's a lot of cool things in that first what feels like 40 years of the movie um but it does track a bit it tracks a lot um don't want to play it um but at the most part you can sort of miss it like there's arnie fighting sort of young arnie that was pretty cool there's yeah the, the attack of the terminator liquidator that was pretty cool the t-1000 yeah <laughs> but the arnie schwarzenegger that the pops or whatever they called him pops yeah yeah pops pops was like the huh? walking infinite knowledge of everything. If anything happened, they just looked at Pops and he sonic screwdrivered it. I'm sorry for the Doctor Who references Matt Smith in the movie. I have to do it. Has to be said. Oh, uh, yeah. Let, yeah. Let's talk about Matt Smith. He's freaking Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> it was It was so funny. We see, we see, you see him really Say early what? on. You see really early on, and now it's I've like... Got to see this. It's like, why the hell... Is, it's like, oh my oh, god, yeah. it's the Doctor! He's watching the thing happen! And then you realise that it just what? goes full dark side. You're like, but that's not the Doctor. It's not the Doctor at all. <laughs> the Doctor has become the Master. Yeah. Now I am Master. Yeah, I just did two, I did two quotes... I did two references in one sentence. Mm. <laughs> now I'm going to have to see this just on how much I hate Matt Smith as the Doctor. Uh. <laughs> Well, then this yeah, will probably no. make you feel better. But he's only in it for like five minutes. Seriously. Yeah. If you stitch at all least of... It distance, at least it really distances himself from the Doctor Who yeah. point. Well, put and it this way. Oh, yeah. If you clip that's... out every scene that did not have Matt Smith in it or a reference to Matt Smith's character, the movie would be shorter than the trailer. Yeah. Like, he's non-existent. Even, even the... Like, even he gets more air time in the, the mid-credit scene. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. So, what do you think of the mid credit scene? Ah, uh, honestly, I don't think they needed to do it. Yeah. I do, like jumping you off don't... the Marvel bandwagon. Yeah, pretty much. Well, no, no, it, it's because it ties up for it ties into it sets it up for another movie. It's hmm. like, oh, why, well, why? Just, because they're doing the. Oh look, we have an old formula that pays our crap tons of money. Let's not change it and just re repeat the same movie again. Oh, there, again, there are a few again. unanswered questions, like, such as who, such as who actually sent Arnie um, Pops back. Yeah, and from when? Yeah, from yeah, from when and and who sent him? Yeah, which I I have a really bizarre theory about. I have a feeling somehow it's 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 um it's Kyle. I think like somehow somehow in some weird another weird alternate timeline he sends it back. 
Yeah. And he just erases, and he just erases who it was, so Sarah doesn't have to remember. Now, see, my hypothesis is slightly different. My hypothesis is it's Sarah. So Sarah doesn't have to remember anyway. <laughs> so Sarah's future Sarah. So because they've got at one point they use a time machine to go from eighty seven to twenty seventeen. If it wouldn't be that hard oh, yeah. for them to recreate the time machine again, since they managed to pull it off in the past, I'm sure they can do it now. Quite oh, that was so stupid. Oh man, it was, it was. The, it was Stargate although... in the basement level. What the hell am I watching? And yeah. We... Although they did, have, they did have the fan service for for both male, male and female. Oh yeah, they did. Um, but then, it could easily be her in the future sending it back to save her because Terminator is not above creating entire paradoxes. That hell, that's no. what this movie is. One massive feckin' paradox. Yeah. The the best part actually, or, or like what I love in the movie is, um, I don't know his real life name, but the guy who voices who does Jameson in the Spider Man movies. Now this is the, the Tobey Maguire ones. Yeah. Like he's so funny, it and, and like he's just like friggin' space time travelers ruining everything. I was, and someone when I was in the cinema yelled out, "Shut up, Jameson!" <laughs> <laughs> and everyone laughed because <laughs> it was so expected. Oh yeah. But he, and- they, I must admit, his character was really good. I actually, I actually oh, thought yeah. it was funny. Like, and Arnie really had awesome. some really good one-liners. Like uh, Arnie yeah. had some zingers. Yeah, the smile. <laughs> that smile. That smile still cracks that me up. Smile is disturbing. Yeah, he does it like three times in the whole movie, and every time I lost it. Um, but yeah, I, love, um, the, I think my favorite one-liner is, is saying is uh, insulting Carl Reese's manhood. <laughs> He's like you are too. You are you you are you are not enough of a man to protect her. <laughs> and he he just gives him like a like a really bro really. You went there, so it's like what are you what are you a dad or something? Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's just cut it short. And jump to ratings. What would you rate it? Oh uh, See, this is hard because I. Did sort of enjoy, but I also felt it dragged on. I'm gonna give it a, a, just a flat five. Like it's halfway. Yeah. Um, now, just for reference for my rating system, I score points depending on different things, and um, to put it to give it a, a comparable mark, I gave Battleship one star, Godzilla five stars, and Avengers was ten. Just to give you an idea of how the scaling works for me, I would give it four out of 10 and the thing that raises it up to 4 instead of 2 which is where I really sort of feel it belongs is Arnie yeah Arnie's just Arnie is just great in it yeah if even if he was in it but it was done slightly differently it just wouldn't work it would just be nah nah Arnie will always yeah Arnie will forever be the Terminator no matter what yeah and yeah it was because of him it was good it's kind of like how Bruce Willis will always be John McClane. Yeah. Or and, and Wolverine will be Wolverine. And Sylvester Stallone will always be Rocky. Yeah. And Wolverine will always be Wolverine. No one knows his name anymore. He's, he's been forced <laughs> to legally change it to Wolverine. I thought it was Hugh Jackman. No, it's Wolverine. <laughs> Someone's in denial. Wolverine, damn it. He's real. <laughs> Shall we move Someone on to get the... this poor guy at the... Uh, okay, let's go to the humans. <laughs> So, oh and, yeah, we got humans. Yeah, no, we got humans. We got plenty of time. So we got about humans. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we still got. We don't have plenty of time. Yes, we do. What? We still got the news to go through too. I know. I'm watching the clock. Gee, it's going to give me like two minutes to do the news. No, I'm going <laughs> to let you do the news now, and then we'll wrap up with humans. Just because oh, Amy okay. wants to do the news last. All right, I so... didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> This this I found while we're doing while we're doing our um, top five video games, Dawn of War three domain has been registered by Sega. Really? Yes. What? Fuck. What the? Warhammer forty thousand Dawn of War three domain has been registered by Sega. So, Can we just quit now? Yeah. Because they Dawn of War one was fantastic. Dawn of War two was all right. They're gonna fuck up three. I guarantee it. Yeah. Dawn of War 2 was heroes go everywhere. It was basically, here you go, 
we're gonna just like take away all the strategic value and just put heroes in. Yeah. That's what Wait, I felt it was. <laughs> it did, sadly. I I preferred the strategy and placing things places. So, yeah. Uh, uh, also, moving along in news, and I want to give a shout out to Star Trek Captain Pike. Yes. So these guys uh, got um, all their funding for um, for their production, and they still have four days left. So everything they get from here on out will go towards extra stuff, which is awesome. Yeah, this... and it looks like it's going to be really good. There's yes, a, and... so many Star Trek fan films coming out at the moment. It's great. And they're all getting funded, which is amazing. Yeah. And just a yeah. really quick note, and this, is, this one comes from our good friend EJ, who couldn't make it again tonight. Um, he and Nobility are going to be at San Diego Comic-Con. So if you're going to SDCC... What? There's going to be a lot of news coming out of Comic-Con. Oh, there's going to be a whole lot of news coming out of Comic-Con. And we, I'm hopefully going to have EJ on afterwards, assuming he's not comatose, um, <laughs> to give us sort of a rundown. Um, but yeah, com as he's going to be at Comic-Con. Make sure you swing in, say hi, tell him we send him the love. And probably bring him a beer. I don't know what he drinks, but he drinks a beer. Lots of beer. He likes beer. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, Ant-Man had a new TV spot over the weekend. Yep. And it actually shows Falcon in the TV spot. Ooh, nice. Hmm. So, that'll... In, and this is in his Age of Ultron outfit, so his new one. So, like, the one that has, like, all the paint... Or, like, all has the stripes and stars and everything on it. Nice. So it means that that's their time for Avengers. Yeah. Oh, after Age of Ultron. Well, no, because Avengers is well. It, that leads in. Sorry, not Avengers. Oh, it, screw it. It's Avengers three. <laughs> it's <laughs> of three. It's Avengers <laughs> two point five. That's why I'm looking. Can at I it. just say this, guys? Before we do run out of time. Yep. So now we don't have much. I just had an interesting bit of news cross my feed. It's not really normal sci-fi like we cover, but we have an Evil Dead series with Bruce Campbell coming back as Ash. Oh, Ugh. yes, I heard about this. Mm. Pass. I'm kind of looking forward to it, just for, this, just for nostalgia. Yep. Okay, right, Stuart, you have 30 seconds. Yep, yeah, last bit of news is update on, Mar on Phase 3 of the Marvel Cin Cinematic Universe. So, coming out in Phase 3 will be Doctor Strange, The Infinity Wars, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Inhumans, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Spidey. Sweet. Sorry. Can't yeah. forget Spidey. A possible rumor that um, uh, Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel could be in, could come up into Doctor Strange. Nice. Possible. This is just a rumor, not confirmed yet. So. Nice. Hmm. Okay, so we're done. Yes. Okay, good. Now we've only got five minutes left to talk about humans. Woo! Yay! So, for those who haven't seen humans, it is effectively a... Think of it like iRobot, the movie with Will Smith, where all the houses have these robot helpers in them, um, but someone's found a way to sort of program a few of them to be conscious and self-aware and whatnot. And it sort of follows them so to speak, it follows some of them trying to sort of escape human society and live on their own, while others, and and it also follows some that are captured and reformatted and put into houses, and they're tr them trying to escape and rejoin their their other friends. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely Wait, they're not having flashbacks. Oh yeah, lots of, lots of flashbacks of people drowning, which is weird. <laughs> um, so, Overall, I actually really enjoyed it so far. Um, it's, it's on my <laughs> to weekly watch list. It comes out about the same time as Killjoys and uh, Dark Matter, so I sort of watch all three of them back to back. Mm. Stuart? Uh, yeah, I've watched a bit of it. I don't mind it. I'm not like into it. Into it like I like with Dark Matter. Like I really love Dark oh, yeah. Matter. Oh, Dark Matter is awesome. It's, it's, it's not as good as Dark Matter. That's unquestionable. No. Oh, and the mother in Humans is from IT Crowd. The boss from IT yeah, Crowd. The chick boss from yeah. that. And it's hilarious <laughs> seeing her. Because she sounds like the same bloody person. Like, the same character. It's like, what the hell? 
She quit yeah, Red, um, <laughs> Red Industries and she got married and now has a robot. Whoa! Must her disgust. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I've watched a few episodes. Uh, it's um, uh, it's tolerable. Like it's not yeah. the worst thing I've seen. I want to see Moss just... turn up and tell her to switch it off and on again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, something about it just doesn't really grip me yet. So yeah. I'm just sort of waiting for the thing that grips me into it. So. Yeah. Probably but wait for it to grip you. Giggity. Um, <laughs> Giggity. Yes, it's, and, the, and the sun is waiting for her to grip him too. <laughs> oh, well, hey, I've try. been staying off the PG. I've been staying on the PG band thirteen bandwagon. If they've lasted this long, it's their own damn fault for not expecting it. Well, he does try. <laughs> yeah, a couple, uh, couple of times. Yeah. The daughter hates the robots. Oh yeah, the daughter is like a super nerd. She's like um. What's her face from Caprica, the main chick in Caprica? Oh, um, yeah, I forgot her name. Anyway, um, yeah, I know so, what you're talking about. Yeah, and hopefully people out there have watched Caprica know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, Scarecrow, what are your I'm... thoughts? Honestly, you really want them? Yeah. PG thirteen, Scarecrow. PG thirteen. <laughs> I felt like I was watching Passions with robots. <laughs> there is only one solution to this. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and he was airlocked. Just, to, yeah. One of these days, I'm gonna have an airlock sound, and it's gonna be funny. It might even be that sound. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. Try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to so do up an airlock shirt where it's just a picture of someone hanging onto the outside of an airlock, banging. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here a lot. <laughs> so, oh, so... actually, I have a little bit. Actually, I actually have one more piece of news. Um, Amy, what are your thoughts on humans? <laughs> <laughs> it's neither here or there for me. Neither here or there. Yeah. So overall, average what? I wouldn't grade it more than five or six. Yeah, no, it's not. It's yeah. like it's yeah, not like grippy yet. It's it's not a turn stuff off to flip to that channel show. It, it... It's, it's missing. A... It's missing the heart. The the um the heart wrencher um part of it that just makes you watch it. Yeah, exactly. It's not there yet. So, so... I've only seen the first two episodes anyway. Yeah. So, so you guys would agree five, maybe yeah, six. Yeah, I'm happy with a five. Happy with Four. a five. Five and a half. Five and a half. I'll be happy. So Stuart's going five and a half. Amy's going four. Um, Scarecrow is going one. Probably. I'll give it two. Okay, just two, this, two just out of ten. Bonus point. Okay, so Scare nothing deserves to be one. Scarecrow is giving it two out of two. Um... And I am completely undecided about this because I have not watched it at all. <laughs> so we can fix that on Saturday. So Sky is giving it ten out of ten. So he's obviously totally. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally giving it ten out of ten because it totally sounds like a ten. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I actually agree. Somewhere sort of around the five-ish bracket is definitely sort of where yeah. it would, where it belongs. So anyway, Stuart, you have twenty seconds bit. for your new yeah. news. So uh, there was a new uh, uh, death battle this week. Ooh. Oh, sorry, not death battle, but the ones that um, do the battle in the sun. It was Deadpool and Domino versus Joker and Harley Quinn. Ooh, nice. Uh, Deadpool and Domino 1, and the next one coming up is Spider-Man versus Darth Maul. Oh, yeah, well, it sucks oh, to be Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not really fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, know, we all know who's going to win that. Yeah, it's, it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's like saying, hmm, who is the squishiest person we know? Judge our Binks! Who can we put him <laughs> up against? A Titan! Oh, yeah, this... this yeah. Why and did, why did Jar Jar Binks my... wins oh, he would, because of luck. He would win because he'd trip over a rocket that's on the ground which would bounce off a building and the building would land on the Titan. And, hey now, just, and then he'd pick Jar up Jar a Binks piece of food and walk away as if nothing had happened. It'd be like... Just just remember this, Jar Jar Binks captured General Grievous in the Clone Wars. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, that's the show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, the conversation continues on SaveSciFi.com uh, Damn, that screwed that up. On facebook.com slash save sci fi. I almost said save sci fi.com slash Facebook, which would have made no sense. <laughs> and 
<laughs> on the YouTube channel where we upload all of these and hopefully if I can finally kick his ass I will be getting it up on iTunes if not we'll have our own little Facebook page you can download this from so we'll catch you later guys see ya bye bye, bye. 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 bye.